excited for our team this year. Um, we, we've uh, been able to uh, start with a quality win at Tennessee, and it, it definitely uh, uh, sets momentum and the stage for how we want to play the rest of the conference. Uh, extremely uh, proud of uh, the play of our seniors, uh, Teresa Plazon, John Keeney, and um, and uh, uh, Shanice McKinney. I think they, those three have really set the tone as far as leadership. We've had some exceptional followers, um, especially in our sophomore guard play of Danielle Ballard. She's really been the X factor for us um, at Tennessee and in our recent win against Florida. So just really excited for this team and the future of our program. Okay, first question comes from Blake Kopmeyer from the Columbia Daily Tribune. Coach, you got, you got Missouri on Thursday. Uh, just looking at them a little bit, what sort of uh, challenges do you expect them to pose? Well, number one, uh, you're talking about a team that um, probably in our league is, is the best um, three-point shooting team um, as far as their percentage. Um, Morgan I does a, a nice job of, of, of really um, extending the defense, and you've got – uh, Coolis, who does everything. Uh, she can shoot the three, she can post, she can take you off the bounce. Um, from Missouri. Uh, so, so guarding that guarding that action is going to be a challenge for us. You know, we run a matchup zone, so we've got to be aware and, and, and locate um, their their threats at all times, and not just our defensive side. Also for you, uh, Missouri's been playing a lot of two-three zone lately. And you know, if they come out in that, uh, what's sort of the key to attacking that? Patience. I think you got to have uh, patience against the zone. I think the one thing that we um, know, <laughs> having been a team that plays zone, is uh, ball reversal and uh, really trying to get the ball in, into the high post area. I think that's going to be key. Uh, but more importantly, against the zone because they play um, such great support defense. Uh, we're going to have to be able to knock down shots from the perimeter. Uh, they do a nice job of, of, of really supporting on the strong side. Uh, so, again, we're going to have to have John Kinney, uh, Danielle Ballard, Von Kreese, those guys come in off the bench hard, and they've got to make shots for us for us to even have a chance against that zone. Coach. Okay, your next question comes from Michelle Vopel from ESPN.com. Hey, good morning, Coach. Um, morning, Michelle. It, as good a season as Danielle had last year, I'm wondering what were the things that you were hoping to see improvement on this year, and and h how do you feel like she's um, become a, a, a matured, I guess, as a player as a sophomore? Well, she's she's definitely a player that can change the complexion of the game. Um, she can, and she's shown that she can, you know, put her team on her back and, and, and put them in a position to win. Uh, Danielle defensively. Um, sometimes gets uh, lost in some of her coverages, and so although she's a uh, although she led us, led us to steals last year, she's having to play in the back of our zone um, a little bit more this year. So she's she's going to have to be um, just more solid defensively. But I like the ball in Danielle Ballard's hands. Uh, I think she does a nice job of, of really not only now uh, getting herself shots. I think in last year she was more uh, that player that got herself shots and got herself looks anytime she wanted them, but. More importantly, this year she's she's uh, looking for her teammates and, and getting them looks. In our last game against uh, Florida, she had five assists. So if you can have Danielle scoring and assisting her teammates, um, that's always a plus for us. Hey, if I could follow that up, just you mentioned how happy you were with the leadership of the seniors. I mean, it's a group of kids that's played a lot of games and and been through a lot of things. How, what do you feel like is what they what these seniors most bring to to your team i know they're, they're they're doing a lot on the court but it is also maybe just their personalities bring a lot to the team as well well definitely i mean one of the chilliest and and just kind of keep things light for us is plays on um she has a a um, an interesting i'm gonna say interesting side to her uh, but she's uh she's a player that you you love you love being around her um she's very intelligent um, but she also um, has a, a goofiness to her, if you will. <laughs> but I think the one thing about her is that she lightens the mood um, for our team. And uh, she she's cutting up in the locker room uh, prior to games, but that's her way of really just 
staying true to the game and loving the game. And then you got John Kenny, who's like the general on our team. I mean, everything is it needs to be done this way, and it's got to be perfect. And she's like our coach on the floor. And uh, and Kenny has just done a nice job of doing whatever we ask of her. The ball comes her way, she's going to rebound it. We, if we throw the alley oop to it, she's going to put it in. Uh, being that shot blocker for us, so they really the three of them complement each other. But they're taking more ownership of this team by one spearheading all of our scouting. Uh, they present the scout. They make sure John is over the guard play, plays off is over the post play. Um, that they know exactly what we're doing and what our game plan is for scouting. Uh, they do a lot of off the court activities, whether it's us, you know, doing community work, which I think is just important after our Texas A&M loss. Um, we took the team to Woodland Elementary, and, and we just got back to, to who we are as people, and, and obviously being givers is, is the main thing that I wanted to convey to them. Um, so that's what the senior class is giving to us. Thank you. Thank hey, you. next question comes from Scott Rabelais from the Baton Rouge Advocate. Nikki, um, didn't get a chance to ask you yesterday. Uh, talk a little bit about, about uh, Regine Moncrief's uh, play. I, I know she's had some good games. She's had some games where – She's maybe maybe uh, not figured as much in the, in the the box score. Pretty typical of a freshman, I guess. Just talk about her her development as as a player, and you know where she, where she's come far, where she needs to go. Well, Brazine is um, realizing that uh, people are scouting us, and uh, she's uh, very uh, much on the radar, and she's got a and she's understanding that uh, ball, obviously. Body control is, is the key for her to stay in the game, whether it's on the ball or on the ball defense has gotten her in foul trouble or going in there taking charges. So really making sure that she keeps herself in the flow of the game. I like the fact that Moncrief is a, is a student of the game. She'll watch film. She, she knows what she's doing, um, what she needs to do well. Um, she, she, she'll own up to it and try to be better. Um, but she's one player that, you know, her first step is pretty explosive. And I think once she learns how to shift gears, if you will, um, and, and not have to be 90 miles an hour, uh, she will be even more explosive and even more hard to guard. And then she'll also be able to sit there and use her quickness to get more steals. But Crazy Moncrief is a, is a great person and a great student athlete, uh, majoring in engineering, um, you know, I, I mean, an A student. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better ambassador for, ambassador for our game. Okay, and your last question comes from Gene Henley from Chattanooga Times Free Press. Hey, Coach. I uh, hope you're well. Um, I'm calling because I know you all had a, you know, as a player for the University of Tennessee, you had some memorable matchups against uh, Coach uh, Jim Foster, who's now coaching at UTC. Um, he, he's nearing um, 800 wins. And uh, so I just wanted to, I guess, you know, maybe if, if you could share a little just, I don't know, memory or just thoughts on him approaching uh, such a monumental plateau. Well, obviously, you know, I, I, I'm very familiar with Coach Foster having played against um, played against him. And, 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 and I know that when you talk about women's basketball, um, there are certain names that will always um, come to light, and his name is one of those. Um, you know, a, a lot of credit to him for, you know, really being a part of our game and making it competitive where people wanted to come out and, and, and watch his teams. And, and I just remember, you know, going against them and, and, and having sellout crowds. And, and I, just, I just know that his hard work um, and his body of work to promote women's basketball um, will go down um, in the record books, not only just with the wins, but all the people that he's touched. And that's a and 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 for for someone who you know is in that '90s class and then having to coach against um, his Vanderbilt team, uh, he's always been a great competitor. Um, but more importantly, he's always carried himself and and and, and his teams have always carried themselves in in a professional manner. And so, you know, a lot of credit to him and, and all the support staff and, and players that have helped him reach this milestone. 